Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. In this series of videos, a case with one teaching point is presented. This is the 10th video in this video series about prenatal diagnosed facial midline lipoma. A 20-year-old pregnant woman referred for fetus ultrasound and 33 weeks of gestation for evaluation of fetal growth. The anomaly scan at 18 weeks of gestation was normal. The fetal growth was normal and we didn't find any major abnormalities. We found a well-defined subcutaneous fat-containing mass in frontal region, and in color Doppler study, there was no any internal vascularity. The skull was normal and no evidence of any cranial bony defects. All intracranial structures was normal. This finding suggestive of a facial midline lipoma as you can see in this 3D reconstruction surface image from the face of the fetus. Also, lipomas are the most common type of benign soft tissue tumors in adults. Congenital presentation is rare. Midline lipomas may be associated with central nervous system malformations and in such cases diverse radiological studies and clinical follow-up are mandatory. Intracranial lipomas are also rare. Most are located in the midline or interhemispheric region most often in corpus callosum. In about 50% of cases, other disturbances frequently associated with varying degrees of hypoplasia or agenesis of corpus callosum are identified in the surrounding nervous system. Subcutaneous lipomas in association with intracranial lipomas are even rarer. The association could be related to abnormal migration and proliferation of neural crest cells. Abnormal neural crest development results in many craniofacial malformations known as neurocrystopathies including facial midline clefts. Intracranial and extracranial lipomas may be independent entities or connected through a frontal bone defect on the skull. As you can see in this sagittal MRI image, we can see here a extracranial lipoma and large intracranial lipoma with corpus callosum agenesis, which they are connected together by a skull bony defect in frontal region. Subcutaneous lipomas in association frontonasal dysplasia is a developmental alteration of the craniofacial region that compromises spectrum of anomalies of the frontonasal area, including hypertelorism, nasal anomalies, and or lip and palate cleft. Patients with frontonasal dysplasia may present with hypoplasia or a genesis of corpus callosum and or a corpus callosum lipoma. Markers strongly associated with frontonasal dysplasia are flux cerebri calcifications and extracranial lipomas. Pi syndrome should be included in the differential diagnosis of frontonasal dysplasia spectrum anomalies. This syndrome consists of facial abnormalities such as cutaneous polyps of the face and nasal mucosa, midline cleft, and midline pericallosal lipoma. The prognosis and psychomotor development of patients with intracranial lipomas is not clear, but based on data from patients with frontonasal dysplasia and PI syndrome, their prognosis would appear to be favorable, with normal psychomotor development and no neurological impairment. Some patients with frontonasal dysplasia may have psychological alterations such as misanthropy and shyness. We can take a few teaching points from this case. 
midline lipomas of the face and other craniofacial anomalies may be associated with intracranial malformations, including intracranial lipomas. Brain MRI for the study of intracranial structures combined with clinical follow-up to monitor neurological changes seems to be the gold standard. This is the image of our patient at 18 months after birth. As you can see, there is obvious regression of midline lipoma and she has no any neurological deficits. Cratial midline lipomas should be assessed by multi disciplinary team consisting of a dermatologist, neurosurgeons, otolaryngologists, and radiologists. Neurological images should be taken and in cases associated with corpus callosum or pericolosa lipoma, frontonasal dysplasia, and Poi syndrome must be ruled out. Thank you for your attention.